Good morning, everyone. I extend my very warm and a sincere welcome to all of the audiences, the distinguished panelists, the speakers who are joining us today for the national webinar on recent advances in prevention and control of hepatitis B and C, jointly organized by ANU Tibia College and Hospital in collaboration with Dr. Biasur Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital and Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences, deemed to be University, New Delhi. We proudly uh, welcome our host for the day, the Ayurveda and Yunani Tibia College for the Empathy Campaigns webinar. The uh, national webinar is the 10th one in the series that we have been organizing so far. It is a, a platform which has been which has been inviting medical colleges and institutes and organizations of much repute like AIMS, Deokhar, like uh, nursing colleges across Delhi and also some inst uh, institutes beyond um, Delhi. So empathy campaign is empowering people against hepatitis and together we invite all the organizations and institutes of repute to stand with us and fight the challenge of viral hepatitis. Viral hepatitis have been emerging as a silent epidemic claiming about 3.4 million lives. Before we formally begin the webinar and I pass the platform to Dr. Norman from Tibia College, I request all our attendees to kindly click on the link that has been posted in your chat box, which will take you to a brief questionnaire. Please take a moment to fill in your responses and make sure that you submit the pre-webinar survey. Alternatively, you can also scan the QR code which is being displayed on your screen right now. This will lead you to a brief questionnaire and we expect you to submit your responses. At the end of the sessions, we will also have a post webinar survey. It is imperative that you take both the surveys and submit your responses for us to generate a link for your e-certificates. So I now hand the platform to Dr. Norman and just a brief housekeeping before I invite him. The queries, I, we request you to please post them in the question and answer box that you may locate on your Zoom platform. Please post your question and answers during the sessions in the question and answer box. Our team will best try to address your queries. Uh, and we will also have some time at the end of the sessions for the question and answers to be taken by our speakers and panelists during the panel discussion. Over to you, Dr. Noman. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Navata. Good morning and a very warm welcome to all, all of you. Respected uh, Dr. R.K. Manchanda, Director Ayush and HOD Kibia College, Dr. Mohammad Zubair, Principal Ayurvedic and Udani Kibia College, Dr. Sajata Rajan, Vice Principal Kibia College, uh, distinguished panelists and members from the Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences and uh, the Empathy Campaign, the delegates who have joined us today students and friends. The speakers in this webinar are Dr. Kanika Koshal, who is Assistant Professor ILBS, Dr. Tushar Prabhakar, Senior Resident at ILBS, Dr. Sujata Yadav, Head of Department, Department of Kaya Chikitsa, and Tibia College, and uh, of course, Rahul Gailor, the Project Officer, Empathy, ILBS. So it is indeed a moment of great pleasure for me to be a part of this webinar. And uh, I, Dr. Norman, Assistant Professor at Tibia College, welcome you all to this knowledge gaining platform jointly organized by Ayurvedic and Yunani Tibia College and Hospital Karol Bagh, New Delhi, in collaboration with Dr. B. R. Sudhmipathic Medical College and Hospital and the Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences, New Delhi. I hope all the attendees have followed the instructions uh, narrated by uh, Dr. Namrata about filling up the pre-webinar survey and uh, you all must have submitted the same by now. So this webinar is focused on such an important theme that is creating awareness on viral hepatitis B and C. You see, uh, hepatitis is a major health problem and has become a silent epidemic worldwide and India falls in the intermediate endemicity zone of hepatitis. According to the recent data produced by WHO, around 1.5 million people were infected and more than 8 lakh deaths were reported due to H hepatitis B virus. An increase in the number of infected cases has really raised concern 
among all healthcare sectors. It can also cause a chronic infection and put people at high risk of death from cirrhosis and liver cancer. We know that a safe and effective vaccine that offers 98 to 100% protection against hepatitis B is available, but still we are witnessing an alarming increase in the number of cases. So it has been noted that overall awareness among the healthcare professionals about hepatitis infections is uh, barely satisfactory, which warrants the continued education and awareness creation among students and other healthcare staff. In Yunani system medicine, hepatitis has been described as uh, vermicabid, which is the inflammation of liver tissues. And uh, sometimes inflammation also occurs in the muscles related to liver endogenetry in the liver peritoneum or in liver blood vessels. You know, Bukrara, so whom we know as uh, Hippocrates, was the first Yunani physician who described vermicabid hepatitis with the explanation based on humoral therapy, uh, humoral theory, pardon, and human temperament. So uh, the major objective of all healthcare professionals is to prevent the occurrence and diseases and promote healthcare equity, quality, and accessibility. Early diagnosis and treatment can prevent uh, health problems that may result from infection and also prevent the transmission of this virus. But for this to happen, awareness among general public and especially among healthcare providers is very important. And uh, this webinar is being organized for this specific purpose, that is to create awareness among the participants about hepatitis, especially hepatitis B and C. And in the next couple of hours, I hope that uh, we all get to gain a lot of facts and information on this theme. So uh, <clears throat> without much ado, I would like to invite Dr. Mohammed Zubair, Principal a and College, to present the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Numan. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings and welcome to the webinar on creating awareness on hepatitis B and C virus, jointly organized by Ayurved and Yunani Tibia College and Hospital in collaboration with the Institute of Liver and Biliary Science in New Delhi and BR Sur Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital. I welcome all the participants and experts and thank you for joining. As you know that Ayurveda and Yunani system of medicines are ancient sciences of indigenous medicine. These are special in respect that these are not only a medical science, but an art of living for human beings. This philosophy not only teaches us how to treat a disease, but also how not to fall ill and keep ourselves healthy and strong. Ayush is a science of total physical and mental health for the humankind. Hepatitis B is a potential life threatening liver infection caused by hepatitis B virus. Most people do not experience any symptoms when newly infected. However, some people have acute illness with symptoms that last several weeks. There is no specific treatment for acute hepatitis B. Therefore, care is aimed at maintaining comfort and adequate, adequate nutritional balance, including replacement of fluid, loss from vomiting and diarrhea. On the other hand, hepatitis C virus causes both acute and chronic infection. Acute hepatitis C virus infection are usually asymptomatic and most do not lead to a life-threatening disease. In Yunani system of medicine, hepatitis has been described uh, under the heading of verme kabit, that means the inflammation of liver. Dr. Numan has previously mentioned that this was initially described by the Bukharat and Hippocrates. Various other Yunani physicians have also described about this disease in details. Ali bin Rabban Tabri, a renowned physician, mentioned that Varme Kabid Muhaddab, that means the swelling on the convex side of liver, occurs when lungs and diaphragm are involved 
and when involvement of spleen stomach and in intestines take place it will be verme kabid mukar that means the swelling on the concave part of the liver ismail jiljani he is a, uh, another renowned physician of yunani mentioned that due to suddha that means the obstruction between liver and gall bladder owing to bile that means the safra does not pass to duodenum and it lead to a accumulation of bile in the liver and uh, thus result in verme kabid that means the inflammation of liver another physician abul hasan ahmed bin muhammad tabri mentioned that when obstruction occurs between spleen and liver it leads to formation of improper blood and that accumulate in the bile canaliculi and produces liver inflammation some yunani scholars in their books like uh, maliyat e nafisi tarjuma e asrai describe safra safra e mohrik that means the burnt ya oxidized bile as cause of hepatitis and hepatomegaly early diagnosis and treatment can prevent health problems that may result from infection and prevent transmission of the virus but for this to happen awareness among general public and especially among health care providers providers is very important this webinar is being organized for this specific purpose to create awareness among the participants about hbv and hcv i hope this program succeed in that matter i hope you all will be immensely benefited with the proceeding of this webinar lastly i want to thank all of you again for joining the webinar i especially thank our esteem director ayush dr rajkumar mantaja ji for his untiring effort and encouragement for the promotion of ayush i want to thank deputy director dr yogita munjal ji vice principal medical superintendent dms dr yusuf jawan sahab dr famida pasar dr numan sanim and other my colleagues for their support the staff from IL, ilbs and dr b r sur homeopathy medical college and other faculty members for joining this webinar on such a short notice i am looking forward to some meaningful insight into the subjects thanks all of you dr numan thank you sir thank you very much for your uh, the brief background that you have presented about the theme and about the disease now i would like to request dr r k manchanda the director ayush and hod tb college please and like us with his keynote address. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. First of all, I would like to thank uh, ILBS faculty for arranging this program for the Ayurvedic and Unani Tibia College. I also thank Dr. Seema Rai and BR Sur team that they are organizing this and taking it as a campaign from the institution to reach out to all Ayur systems. So, with these words. we all know that about the hepatitis b and c significance of this why this campaign is necessary because all over health workers are vulnerable to get this infection this spreads from biological fluids and many of our doctors while treating patients come across such situation what is most important thing is that we should have accurate information about its epidemiology and how we can prevent at least in health worker another very important angle i see that whenever anybody suffers from such chronic disease they tend to visit ayush doctors because there is lot of saying and we do have some treatment uh, related to hepatitis so people tend to visit our doctors and our doctor must know the accurate information that what kind of medicine can be given and what kind of herbs cannot be given because there are certain herbs that may have 
long term effects also so that kind of accurate information knowledge sharing is most most important thing like uh, i was listening that from mohammed zubair and then later on dr sujata is also going to share about the information available about hepatitis in general in ayush literature hepatitis is a disease that we all know but what is most important thing today is that we need to understand the modern outlook about this disease the information about hepatitis was written in our textbook when there was no knowledge of virology advanced knowledge of vaccination and all those things were not available but now those that those informations are also available to us so it is our duty that we should update ourselves about what is going on as regard the hepatitis b and hepatitis c virus is a concern i today i am just reminded of my posting when i was working with aids control cell at, at the directorate of health services way back about 20 30 years and we used to give information about this infection along with hiv infection but our main focus was hiv but we used to talk of hepatitis b and c because the way these viruses also spread is the same as hiv spread so i hope that during the day when we were going to discuss the intricacies about its infection and how it can be prevent prevent we will be able to guide our patients in a better way and we will have along with our traditional knowledge about hepatitis we will have modern knowledge about what are the various reasons for that hepatitis so with these words thank you very much for organizing this program and i hope there will be lot of earning i'll also joining few of the lectures thank you thank you sir uh, for your words now without any delay uh, i think we shall move on towards our main session i would like to invite our first speaker uh, dr kanika kaushal dr kanika is currently working as an assistant professor of epidemiology at ilbs before joining ilbs she has worked as technical officer at southeast field epidemiology and technical net technology network that is safety net an international organization funded by united states centers for disease control and prevention atlanta us for india epidemic intelligence service program eis she managed the india eis program for national center for disease control and cdc delhi and worked actively in various covid-19 related outbreak investigations and surveillance activities since march 2020 before joining safety net she has also worked in the digital health space during her tenure at pgi chandigarh where uh, the team successfully helped set up electronic health records in a public health dispensary from scratch in collaboration with hisp india for outpatient services to the slum population of chandigarh she also implemented smart technology in a small village of district panchkula haryana where they checked the feasibility and utilization of mobile phone based smart technology for chronic hypertensive and diabetic patients in a resource constrained setting at a rural healthcare post in north india she has published over 50 research articles in various national and international journals i welcome you ma'am please over to you Hello. Uh, thank you, Dr. Salim. So it is my pleasure to be delivering this lecture today on uh, hepatitis B and C, the current disease burden in India for the students of your college. So viral hepatitis is increasingly being recognized as a public health problem in India now, and uh, we all know that hepatitis uh, viruses are ranging from A, B, C, D, and E. so hepatitis a and e are uh, important causes of acute viral hepatitis and acute liver failure as well but due to paucity of data the exact burden of disease for the country is not yet established uh, a and e virus that we uh, know um, uh, which occurs because of the uh, you know contaminated food or water ingestion so they are uh, leading causes of acute hepatitis and acute liver failure cases in india so these are the fractions uh based on the available literature that we have so it is a wide range uh, ranging from 10 to 30% for hepatitis a and 10 to 40% for hepatitis e for acute hepatitis cases 
and for acute liver uh, failure cases 15 to 45 percent of the acute liver failure are because of hepatitis e virus so these two are uh, because uh, because of the uh, as we say oral uh, route and then coming to hepatitis b and c which is the topic for uh, today the current burden so i'll be uh, going uh, going through hepatitis b burden first so around uh, 250 million people are infected with a uh, chronic hepatitis b globally uh, resulting in around 9 uh, uh, 9 lakh deaths annually and more than 90% of the deaths and disability are as a result of viral hepatitis attributed to chronic hepatitis B and C infections. So the Southeast Asian uh, region countries, if we, if we see these countries, so India is somewhere here with 1.7 uh, in the prevalence amongst all the other Southeast Asian countries, which you can see is like relatively lesser than the countries like Bangladesh, Korea, Indonesia, Myanmar, etc. Uh, so, but WHO uh, has set a, uh, um, uh, is set to eliminate the viral hepatitis as a public health threat by 2030, and the, the targets are that the new chronic hepatitis B cases be reduced by uh, infections be reduced by 90 percent, and the mortality attributed to those uh, those infections be reduced by 65 percent. So these are the, uh, we see like in uh, by 2020 from the baseline, we had 10% reduction in the deaths because of chronic HBV and HCV infections. So we aim to bring it down to 65% by 2030. And as far as new infections are concerned, we aim to bring this 30% reduction from the baseline uh, of 2015 to 90% uh, by 2030. So this is as per the global uh, WHO Global Health Sector Strategy on Viral Hepatitis uh, document, which I've attached here, and you can go through this. So as far as our country is concerned, so based on the prevalence of hepatitis B surface antigen, uh, the areas are divided into high, intermediate, or low HPV endemicity. Uh, endemicity. So uh, as we go through the numbers, if you see in the uh, current uh, few current slides. So the numbers are ranging somewhere in uh, one to four percent, depending on the literature. So India is falling somewhere in the low to intermediate uh, uh, endemicity zone. So uh, HBS AG positivity in the general population. Uh, this is depending on the literature that we have, or the available literature, one point one percent to twelve point two percent. So the 10, point, uh, 10 to 15 percent of this entire pool of HPV uh, carriers in the uh, world uh, is in India, and there uh, this accounts for around 40 million uh, hepatitis B carriers. And about 15 to 25 percent of these carriers are likely to suffer from cirrhosis and liver cancer and may die prematurely. Uh, then again, this estimated point prevalence, this is on this uh, uh, recent article that, that was published in 2021 uh, on chronic hepatitis B challenges and successes in India. So the point prevalence in that, uh, uh, that uh, they, uh, you know, derived it as 2.4%. So again, like this is in the low endemicity uh, with the 95% CI, like it can be, if we repeat this, it can be anywhere between 2.2 to 2.7. But if you see that it is uh, particularly high in the tribal area population, uh, ranging to about 16%. So again, these are some studies uh, by Schwitzer et al. WHO document on uh, global and country uh, estimates uh, on the chronic HBV infection and uh, this CDA polaris. So we have all these numbers on prevalence, 1.46%, 1.95%, and 2.5%. So the, uh, the numbers range from one, anywhere between one to uh, three or four percent. So this is again uh, uh, the data that was published uh, in a systematic review being done uh, between 1965 to 2013. So they included 20, 129 studies in this and they uh, reported this prevalence again, uh, 1.46 percent. So these are all just numbers to give you an uh, idea about uh, how uh, the current literature is pointing towards the uh, current burden on hepatitis B. So as I said that uh, particularly the tribal areas, there is a population heterogeneity for hepatitis B in India. So once uh, uh, we are talking like for at the country level, it is somewhere in one to three percent range or four. So in Ladakh, uh, they have studies that uh, give the prevalence of 12.7 percent or in Arunachal where we have 21 percent. 
and if you see these are some of the tribes of andaman and nicobar and the famous tribe that is the jarwa population so uh, there are studies depicting that there is like 65% uh, prevalence in uh, in uh, of hepatitis b in this set of population uh, so there is definitely population heterogeneity and uh, we have the widely available literature on this and uh, which we can refer to for the current burden of hepatitis b in india then hepatitis c in india so a prevalence uh, of hepatitis c viremia in india in 2005 15 was around 0.5% affecting uh, somewhere 5 to 11 million people so anti hcv antibody prevalence was in the range of uh, 0.09 to 15% uh, this all uh, this means that 6 to 12 million chronic hcv infection infected people were there and 3 million to 9 million people with active hcv infections then chronic hcv infection accounts for uh, 12 to 32% of uh, hepatitis uh, hepatocellular carcinoma cases and 12 to 20% of the cirrhosis cases so these are the chronic infections of hcv so if we see relatively the hcv uh, numbers so india is somewhere here uh, um, after indonesia myanmar and thailand they have high numbers of 2.2 to 3% here so india has point uh, is here in 0.56 so higher than uh, bhutan korea or uh, maldives and sri lanka nepal for that matter this is where the india standing in cr countries so again the we have the prevalence rates from uh, meta and from the literature review extensive literature review so another meta analysis of this um these many studies t27 studies so they gave different numbers for different uh, you know commun uh, uh, community studies it's 0.85% in asymptomatic blood donors they did so 0.44% and in pregnant women uh, uh, 0.88% so this is the range high prevalence of hcv from 3.5 to 44.7 as you can see and uh, this high prevalence is particularly in the high risk individuals uh, high risk prevalence as compared to the previous slide like we see less than 1% here so high prevalence 3.5 to 44.7% is in the high risk individuals including patients with hiv infection so they tend to have hcv hiv co infection patients receiving hemodialysis iv drug users or patients requiring multiple blood transfusions uh, and so on so there there is higher uh, higher numbers uh, if we uh, talk about the prevalence of hcv so these are uh, the pool prevalence rates of hbv and hcv co infection and then hcv hiv infection and uh, these are the numbers again so if we talk about the uh, complications that hbv and hcv lead to so hepatocellular carcinoma and cirrhosis so uh, this these are just the broad numbers for you to just compare that hbv leads to 40 to 50% of the hep cellular carcinoma if we talk about we owe it to hbv infections and 12 to 32% uh, to hcv infections and also relatively higher cases of cirrhosis on from hpv and 20 to 30% and 12 to 20% for hcv so all these numbers that we just went through so these are from the literature reviews so there are limitations of this current literature is that the quality of the of variable is all uh, always a question and uh, we need to combine Rob, uh, like we need to combine the studies, rep non-representative studies as well, different age groups, age and sex, uh, 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 different across different age groups, across uh, male and female, different time points. As we talk, we are talking about the point prevalence in each of our slides. So there is paucity of data for age-specific, sex-specific data on uh, hepatitis B or C, and uh, definitely infants and young children. and then the studies are uh, the studies uh, mostly sub national level some targeted high endemicity areas so that uh, that is what we saw in those numbers so uh, definitely the steps needed are the bird dose of hepatitis b is mandatory safe blood uh, uh, blood products and medical procedures screening and monitoring strategies uh, we need to um, just target on high endemicity regions as well and surveillance system needs to be established for chronic liver disease it uh, 
on levels, testing and treatment, uh, and vaccination for health workers. So these are again some numbers on the targets. Uh, so global health strategy, uh, sector strategy document on viral hepatitis we just saw for WHO. So these are the 2015 baseline numbers on these interventions, vaccination, which we talk about, talked about blood safety, injection safety, testing services. So these were the numbers that we had in 2015, and we aim to uh, you know target it at 90% for HBV uh, vaccination, for instance, and uh, for prevention from mother to child transmission. We aim to uh, you know from 39% in 2015, we target that uh, we should be achieving uh, by 2030 and by uh, to 90% in 2030, and so on, like 100% blood safety, no unsafe injections at all. Um, so these are targets as per the GHSS uh, on viral hepatitis. So again, uh, these are the pillars for HBV elimination uh, and immunization, 100%, uh, then prevention of mother to child transmission, safety, as far as we talk about blood banking, safe dialysis, safe injections, biomedical waste disposal, that's very important, and harm reduction on uh, especially people who inject drugs, de-addiction and opioid substitution programs and expanding the access to uh, care. So again, these are the challenges in managing hepatitis B in India. And uh, when we talk about the public health approach, so it is time that we correct the course of ev evidence-based practice by improving uh, immunization coverage and expanding the access to care in chronic hepatitis B cases. The appropriate population screening and uh, treatment strategies need to be adopted in a decentralized fashion under the uh, national program for viral hepatitis elimination. Then a creation of a national viral hepatitis and transplant registry will definitely improve the uh, poor epidemiological data that impaired the formulation of certain healthcare policies. And then uh, like India's emergence as a hub for affordable transplantation, it uh, is currently offering hope for management of advanced disease and curative care for uh, hepatocellular carcinoma cases. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for such an elaborate presentation. Now, I would like to invite our next speaker, Dr. Tushar Prabhakar. Dr. Prabhakar is working as a senior resident in Department of Clinical Research and Epidemiology, ILBS. He graduated from University College of Medical Sciences, Delhi, and recently completed his post-graduation from Lady Harding Medical College, Delhi. During his res residency, he has worked in the fields of core patient management, essential drugs and med medicines, health system strengthening, infectious and non-communicable disease epidemiology, reproductive women and child health, family planning services, malnutrition and immunization activities. As a digital health specialist, he was the departmental representative to assist and train members in LHMC for COVID related data handling and operations at Delhi State Government State Data Management Portal and Comke Delhi Fights Corona Portal. A creative enthusiast, he has won the first prize in numerous national conferences of IAPSN and IPHA for best educational video and best educational meme competitions. So uh, now hand over to you, Dr. Prabhakar, for your presentation. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, the topic given to me was uh, viral hepatitis B and C, screening, vaccination, and health education. So, so, we'll be covering the topic under the following headings. Uh, firstly, we'll talk about screening, uh, where we'll talk about whom to screen and what are the various screening tests available for Hep B and C. And then we'll talk about vaccination, especially for hepatitis B vaccine, the types of it and the schedule. What if, if somebody misses a dose of hepatitis B vaccine? Uh, the coverage so far for the vaccination of hepatitis B and the strategies to improve hepatitis B, especially the bird dose coverage. 
Finally, we'll talk in brief about the health education aspect for improving awareness on hepatitis B and C so that we can achieve elimination by 2030. So firstly, why should we focus on screening? So this is a graph by the, given by the World Health Organization, uh, which is showing the cascade of viral hepatitis prevention, diagnosis, care, and treatment. So as we can see, of all the people who have hepatitis B and C, very few, almost half of them are actually tested and aware of their hepatitis B status. So from this page, we can see that a low level of diagnosis of hepatitis B and C is a major bottleneck in road to elimination by 2030. So what are the key interventions to eliminate hepatitis B and C? We have already seen uh, that we need to focus on vaccination, which includes both the primary three doses of childhood and the birth dose, then safe blood practices and safe injections, arm reduction. Today, I'll be focusing mostly on hepatitis B and C diagnosis and treatment. So as we can see, the WHO Global Health Sector Strategies they have set a target that for elimination of hepatitis by 2030, we need to diagnose at least 30% of all those people who have hepatitis by 2030. And we need to increase that percentage to 90% by 2030. But as we can see so far in this Southeast Asia region of WHO, by 20, current uh, estimates reveal that only 10% of HPV infected people have been diagnosed and only 6.9% of HCV people have been diagnosed, which is clearly less than what the targets were set for 2020. So whom to screen for hepatitis B and C? So under the National uh, Hepatitis Program, uh, they aim to set up screening services at all peripheral institutions, which include health wellness centers and primary health centers. So anybody who walks into these centers, they are eligible or they should be uh, entitled to free uh, testing for at least diagnosing and then so that we can move ahead for their treatment strategies and those who are at high risk they should be given preference so if a peripheral health center suppose has a limitation in the number of testing kits or anything so we should give priority to people who are possibly at high risk so who are these high risk people so these include uh, pregnant or expecting mothers people who use injectable IV drugs, healthcare workers and frontline workers, includes doctors, nurses, and all those staff in the hospital, and people who are on hemodialysis, and people living with HIV. So screening tests for HPV and HCV, uh, these include basic rapid diagnostic kits, which are easily available. So what are the benefits of using these RDTs? These are single-use disposable assays, and they are simple to use formats. So they can be used by non-medical staff even who are present at such peripheral institutes and villages. They don't require any additional chemicals or reagents and they can be easily read visually and they give a simple qualitative result within 30 minutes. So these are the two tests available uh, for rapid diagnostic tests. So we can see that there are, uh, for hepatitis B, the uh, thing that we detect in this test is the HBS antigen, whereas for hepatitis C, we look for the anti-HCV antibodies. So as we can see, both of these tests have a high sensitivity and specificity. That means these tests are reliable. So anybody who has undergone screening with these rapid diagnostic tests, we can more or less confirm that they have hepatitis and then we should uh, refer them to higher centers for proper di final diagnosis and starting of treatment. So as we know, hepatitis B doesn't have a uh, very foolproof treatment. So the best strategy to eliminate hepatitis B in particular is to prevent its success. So for that, the most important aspect is vaccination. So hepatitis B vaccine, it's basically a recombinant subunit vaccine, which contains a viral protein, uh, which is called hepatitis B surface antigen. Earlier, it used to be produced from plasma of people with HBV infection, but now we only use recombinant protein. So the common types of hepatitis B vaccine that are available uh, either in monovalent form or in combination form. The monovalent has only hepatitis B component. Uh, it comes with by the name of Engerix B. 
uh, we can see that these are two color coded vials uh, one is for adults and the other is for children uh, but um, in the government supply we get the hepatitis b vaccine for especially for children immunization we get it in the form of a pentavalent vaccine which also has uh, components for other vaccine preventable diseases like uh, diphtheria tetanus pertussis and haemophilus influenza b so this is free and this is what comes under the universal immunization program by the government of india but if we go to a private practitioner uh, they also have the uh, an ex, uh, ex, extra component for injectable polio virus and we call this hexavalent combination vaccine which comes by the name of infarix and hexacin and these are available with private pediatrician practices so the schedule for hepatitis b we have a newborn or primary childhood schedule and one for adults so for newborns uh, we should give the birth dose which is also called as a zero dose and it is usually the monovalent vaccine that is given and thereafter for the primary three dose schedule we give the combination pentavalent vaccine at 6 weeks 10 weeks and 14 weeks of age and both these vaccines are given in a dose of 0.5 ml intramuscularly for people who are like healthcare workers or at risk those adults should be given uh, the monovalent vaccine in the in a schedule that is like at 0 months and then after 1 month and then 6 months and the dose for these is 1 ml intramuscularly so we are giving this vaccine so how protective is it so we see that the birth dose of the vaccine which is given which can be given up to 24 hours after birth followed by two at least two doses of the primary uh, vaccines at 6 weeks and 10 weeks it effectively prevents mother to child transmission in about 90% of the cases wherein the mother is hepatitis b positive and when we and when we see about the primary three dose vaccination of hepatitis b when we give just one dose it offers a protection of 6 uh, 16 to 40% by but if we give all the three doses so we see that the protection rate is almost 98 to 100% so what if somebody misses any of these doses so for infants uh, the universal immunization program which the government of india follows it says that the birth dose should be given at birth but if missed it can be given up to 24 hours after birth and for child uh, primary childhood doses that is 6 10 and 14 weeks doses can be given up to a one year of age provided the duration between doses is 4 weeks so if a mother comes with a child who and got uh, the first dose at 6 weeks and missed the 10 and 14 week doses so she can come any time before the child reaches the age of 1 and we can we should make sure that the uh, period between the second and the third dose is at least four months for adults if only first dose is taken the second dose should be administered as soon as possible when the patient returns and if first and second dose is taken and the third dose is missed that should also be administered as soon as possible provided the interval between the second and third dose is at least 8 weeks sometimes when the vaccination history is not reliable or the patient can't remember so extra doses of single antigen monovalent hepatitis b vaccine can be given it's not hard. so in pregnancy uh, it said uh, it is proven that neither pregnancy nor lactation should be considered a contraindication to vaccination Uh, moreover pregnant women who are at risk of hpv should be asked to take the hepatitis uh, b vaccine in order to prevent the mother to child transmission so who are these pregnant women who are at risk those who have had more than one sex partner during the previous 6 months or are being evaluated or treated for a sexually transmitted disease std have had a recent or are injectable drug users Uh, have had hvs antigen positive sex partner that is basically having a sex partner who is hb positive so how do we know if the vaccine has worked so we need to test the serum level and a level of equal to more than 10 ml international units per ml is considered protective so this titer is used as a cut off to define vaccine response so we need to get this tested once and if 
the level is 10 or more we consider the person has over 90 people will continue to remain protected for at least 30 years we will have a brief word on the adverse events following vaccines so as all other vaccines uh, the adverse events are mostly mild and we can see that there is local pain swelling redness fever and headache in about three people out of every 10 people and this is commonly seen with other vaccines as well uh, very rarely some patient who gets or a person who gets hep b vaccine can show a hyperactive response which is called anaphylaxis so this becomes a contraindication so if a person uh, if a person receives one dose of hepatitis b vaccine and shows anaphylaxis he or she should not be given the remaining doses the who health uh, global health sector strategy on hepatitis they have mentioned some key service targets uh, that should be achieved in order to eliminate hepatitis by 2030 so in this graph we can see that uh, the coverage of primary three dose that is uh, 6 10 14 dose vaccine for 2020 it's 90% uh, of all children should receive that and by 2030 again 90% of all children should be getting that whereas the primary birth dose or the zero dose by 2020 there were, the target set was 50% of all those children being born should receive the birth dose which should be increased to 2030 90% uh, by 2030 so if we see india's status uh, according to the nhfs 5 uh, data which was released in 2019 84% of children in india under the age of one received the primary three dose hepatitis b vaccine and only 56 percent children being born received the hepatitis birth dose before 24 hours of birth so the primary uh, three dose coverage is pretty good but the zero dose coverage is low as is in many developing nations so this is a cause for concern and in all developing nations and in india it's due to the high prevalence of home deliveries and also there are logistic issues example absence of cold chain maintenance for vaccine in peripheral regions and villages so why is the zero dose important this is a graph uh, where we can see the occurrence of chronic hepatitis b infection as age of infection uh, with, compared to the age of infection so as we can see somebody who develops yeah who uh, protracted hepatitis b at birth there's a 90 percent chance of the person or the child developing chronic infection in future but as the age of infection increases the chance of having chronic infection decreases so children who are like five years or older and if they get hepatitis b after that age the chance of having developing chronic infection in future reduces to almost 10 percent so that's why bird dose becomes so important so infection during infancy so and early childhood are particularly likely to lead to chronic infection with risk of cirrhosis and death so what can we do to increase the coverage of bird dose so recently there has been uh, an approach to use a term called controlled temperature chain so which is an innovative approach and it allows uh, heat stable vaccines to be kept outside the ice line refrigerator at room temperature for up to three days so we are currently testing these vac uh, this approach for heat stable vaccines uh, four of them one of them is hepatitis b and with time we'll get enough evidence to see if this uh, methodology is efficacious and can be used in places where there are logistic uh, issues so along with the vaccine uh, health education is also an important tool to spread awareness and uh, make prevention because it's ultimately prevention that will help us eliminating hepatitis so there are multiple strategies which can be used to spread health education uh, some of it are posters for awareness as a general a mass media tool for uh, generating awareness among the public. Then uh, holding competitions 
wherein school children can be roped in well and thereby uh, disseminate knowledge among them advocating us uh, having a, a brand ambassador who can advocate the uh, things and uh, take the information spread to a wide audience using social media to spread awareness and having our enrolling campaigns to disseminate knowledge and involving stakeholders so that uh, policy decisions can be taken at a higher plane so these are some of the posters released by ilbs uh, which include uh, hepatitis one on hepatitis that c is curable and one on hepatitis b vaccination among pregnant women the importance of vaccination at birth and the primary three dose vaccines and some general posters ilbs had conducted a cartoon competition among school children and in order to disseminate the knowledge and create awareness among them a happy school program was campaign was started in 2019 wherein uh, all the government school principals and teachers in delhi were roped in for a one day workshop to generate awareness about hepatitis b and c and so that and they could further disseminate the knowledge among their peers and students this is an i pledge campaign wherein um, the people are uh, they take up a vow to save uh, save their liver from the hepatitis and do everything they can to eliminate hepatitis by 2030 we have a brand ambassador uh, mc maricom everybody knows who she is and she helps us in propagating the knowledge or awareness regarding hepatitis to the mass audience around the world many parliamentarians have been roped in uh, to raise the issue at a national level and do things to pre uh, promote awareness among the society members many faculty videos are available on social media like twitter and uh, facebook and the official youtube channel and people can log in and see gain awareness free of cost to summarize uh, diagnosis is a key bottleneck in our race to eliminate hepatitis by 2030 and the treat and the solution for that is screening So rapid diagnostic tests are available for screening, uh, which are easy to use, quick, uh, provide quick results. They are cheap, and they have high specificity and sensitivity, so they are quite reliable. Primary three dose uh, of hepatitis B vaccine, they give a protection rate of 98 to 100 percent, and the third dose and two primary doses prevent mother to child transmission by over 90 percent. Anti-hepatitis B titer should be. Equal to or more than 10 milli international units per ml, and it means adequate protection is there. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Prabhakar, for such an elaborate presentation. Now I would like to invite our next speaker uh, of the session, Dr. Sujata Yadav. Dr. Sujata is presently working as HOD and Associate Professor, PG Department of Cardiac Chikitsa. I am with medicine and with the college and hospital. She is also the nodal officer of geriatrics in the hospital. She did her uh, BMS from the same and with the college and hospital, MD in chikitsa from Banaras in the university, mm -hmm. and PhD from Sampoonanan Sanskrit University Varanasi. She is a very hard working faculty having more than 21 years of teaching and clinical experience in the PG department of chikitsa. she has many publications and a book to her credit and has delivered various lectures as resource person in different state and national level seminars and cmes recently during the pandemic she contributed in the management of covid cases in covid healthcare center and worked as aefi nodal officer ayurveda during covid 19 vaccination program held in ayurvedic and unani tibia college and hospital under the mentorship of director ayush she published a research paper on covid analyzing symptomatology and effectiveness of ayurvedic treatment in covid-19 a cohort observational retrospective study a retrospective observational study on role of uh, sanshamni vadi and chivan prash on covid-19 vaccinated population of covid shield is also on way so i am delighted to welcome you ma'am uh, for your presentation over to you 
Thank you, Dr. Noman. And I hope I am audible. Yes, ma'am, clearly. Okay. Good afternoon, all respected director, Dr. R. K. Manchanda, all the learned faculty members and students. Today, I thank uh, all the organizers from ILBS for making our college a, uh, for making our college a part of this campaign awareness awareness campaign because WHO has identified hepatitis as a major health concern for India. As per WHO, in India only about 4 crore people are chronically infected with hepatitis B and around 60 lakh to 1.2 crore people are infected with hepatitis C. Now, a few uh, points about the Ayurvedic aspect before switching over to my PPT. Our ancient uh, seers or Ayurvedic seers, uh, they had ample wisdom about viral hepatitis and related complications. They gave probable cure for all the liver disorders and Ayurvedic classical texts, they have described vividly all the hepatobiliary diseases, including viral hepatitis under the uh, name of the disease, Kamla Rog, which is described as jaundice. And another uh, uh, another uh, description is in Udar Rog, where abdominal disorders are being described. Now, a few words about the etiology according to Ayurveda. And uh, Ayurveda has mentioned basically the pit visitation, one of the three basic physiological units which are present in human body. And pit visitation, improper diet and lifestyle, is one of the major factor for pathogenesis of all the liver diseases, including viral hepatitis. Yes. Now, other is uh, the blood and the circulatory channels. They are also being clearly mentioned by the Ayurvedic text. We have a very good uh, Ayurvedic prospect for uh, viral hepatitis because it can Ayurvedic medicine they can help both uh, in all the almost all the stages. Particularly, uh, uh, they can prevent the progression to the chronic uh, hepatitis and various uh, stages of chronic hepatitis. Uh, they can be dealt with, and particularly uh, Ayurvedic medicine they have a role in preventing dreaded complications of hepatitis B and C, particularly like cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. So with uh, this brief uh, introduction, I will now switch over to my PPT, where I will tell the other aspect of Ayurvedic perspective. Now regarding uh, Ayurvedic aspect of viral hepatitis, Ayurveda has described uh, the hepatobiliary diseases in the two contexts, namely Kamla and Jalodhar. Kamla, which grossly defined the condition as yellowish discoloration of skin, eye, and uh, various parts of the body with malaise and loss of appetite. Kamla depicts the inflammation of liver parenchyma irrespective of the etiology. On the basis of progression, Kamla has three stages and they can be named as uh, Kumbh Kamla, Halimak, or Panki, and some other uh, names are also being given for these complications. Other description in Ayurvedic. Uh, Text is regarding the Yakrit odor or hepatomegaly is being described under uh, this oh, heading ignore, where other abdominal. One, one Dr. Hour. Sujata, we cannot view your presentation. Yeah, your presentation. Okay. Your slides are not visible. Ma'am, kindly open the presentation, minimize the zoom, and then uh, click on screen share. It must be the uh, green the tab. Now. Screen share. Hmm. Okay. I hope it's visible, ma'am, now. No, ma'am, it's not visible. Could you just click on uh, the green tab, screen share, and then allow? Screen share, okay. Yes, allow screen share. I am trying. Dr. Norman, if the presentation has been shared to you over email, you can share your screen. Yeah, it's visible now. Yeah, now your screen is visible. Okay. You can just tilt your mobile. Uh, I think you're using your phone. Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, it's visible now. Okay. Uh, now I'll start my, the, my presentation. Regarding Ayurvedic aspect of viral hepatitis, as I have already phone told you that there are uh, two... Uh, textual description phone. about is it still, visible? It is visible, but uh, it's better if you can hold that phone in a horizontal uh, face. Okay, just I'm starting. Rotates in. Uh, 
what happened here rotation stop kar diya na we are trying to share screen now yeah is it visible dr noman yes it's visible yes it's better now and you can uh, you can just uh, choose slide share if it's possible or otherwise you can okay. continue with this also okay can i start now yes 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 please ma'am okay uh, as i've already uh, told in introduction that there are uh, two description uh, of viral hepatitis in ayurvedic text one is in uh, kamla and kamla with various other complications have been also been described in ayurvedic text like kumbh kamla halimak these are the all the chronic stages uh, which have been described in ayurvedic text now one is the uh, other uh, description in ayurvedic text about the udhar rog or abdominal disorders and according to ayurveda if Uh, yakrit odor is not treated properly and timely it can progress finally to jalodhar or ascites which is a final complication in liver disorders this correspond very well to the current understanding of progression of liver diseases into decompensated uh, liver disease or portal hypertension and finally leading to uh, finally leading to cirrhosis and other complication in uh, modern text also there is another slide Okay. Now, the uh, regarding the target goals of Ayurvedic intervention, this can include intervention acting directly on viral virulence and activity by using of hepatoprotective drugs, which prevent the inflammation of hepatocytes, and also act on decreasing inflammation of already inflamed cells. Second is the immunomodulation, which modulates the immune system in response to viral antigen and prevents the immune-mediated liver cell destruction. third one is the development developing and boosting the innate immunity system of the body to fight and eliminate virus via natural immunity of the host to prevent the progression into fibrosis by using anti fibrinogenic agents this is the these are the target goals now uh, role of ayurveda can also be where is the second slide in the uh, prevention of the complication of viral hepatitis b and c particularly as we all know that viral hepatitis this finally leads to fibrosis chronic hepatitis cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma now ayurvedic intervention can help to prevent all these complications of viral hepatitis b and c and can prevent its, its further progression to chronicity now Uh, regarding the ayurvedic line of treatment in viral hepatitis there are two line of treatment in viral hepatitis as per ayurvedic text one is the shodhan or purification procedures where we use medicated grit for snehan or internal oleation and virechan and other one is the shaman or palliative care with single herbs and compound preparation along with dietary changes and lifestyle modifications these are the two basic things now regarding shodhan uh, particularly medicated grits are uh, used for purification procedures we start with the initial dose initial uh, low dose is given and then which is increased progressively depending on person to person because it is a very personalized type of treatment so the dose is uh, increased accordingly various uh, these are the various uh, medicated uh, grits which are been described in the text now along with the first uh, these uh, medicated grits they are given to the patient and after that the purification procedure mainly which is uh, indicated in liver disorder is the virechan and it is basically medically induced pur purgation which is being given to the patient this is detox detoxification procedure which reduces the pro inflammatory cytokines in the body this increases the bile flow and enhances enterohepatic circulation there are various drugs drugs number of drugs have been described for this uh, medically induced purgation or virechan few of them are described here like aragvat plant is being used and gomut haritri haritki danti mool kalk paste of some plants this has been uh, used there are number of herbs which can be used for this medical purgation now uh, we come to the uh, shaman chikitsa or the med, uh, treatment which is given by the ayurvedic medicines there are around 3, 300 herbs and herbal mineral preparation which are described in the ayurvedic text and basic mode of action of ayurvedic medicine in viral hepatitis is hepatoprotective 
the mechanism of hepa2 protection includes stimulation of heme oxygenase one activity inhibition of uh, nitric acid oxide production reduction in hepatocyte apop, uh, apoptosis and nuclear factor kb activation is there and second important uh, mode of action of the ayurvedic medicines is by the antioxidant strong antioxidant potential and which causes induction of antioxidant enzymes like superoxide dimutase reduces glutathion and catalase so mainly the ayurvedic medicine they are used for hepato protection and uh, antioxidant uh, potential of these medicine that can help these viral hepatitis cases now uh, about a uh, few herbs which are there already uh, we are using from thousands of years so uh, i have listed some of the drugs which are commonly used in liver preparation uh, one of them one of the important is calmeg or endographis paniculata and these are the actions on uh, liver which uh, by which it helps it helps in hepatic regeneration and uh, it increases resistance in liver by uh, for damage by the toxins activates reticular endothelial system and works in basically that hepato protection and antioxidant effects is present in all the herbs and lot of work has been uh, research work has been done on this herb and it is used uh, for liver disorders all the dis liver disorder particularly another one is the bhumia malki or phyllanthus neuri this is particularly this herb is particularly been given for the hepatitis uh, b uh, eradication and uh, there are researches also which have been uh, which have been done in hepatitis b cases for its hepato protective properties and for uh, uh, this uh, eradication of the hepatitis b virus and preventing its spread to the liver also so bhumia amalki this is also very important herb for uh, viral hepatitis madhuyashti and haridra these are also other herbs madhuyashti uh, it it arrests it, it is mainly uh, it has a mainly anti inflammatory action with the help of uh, Uh, arresting the production of inflammatory cytokines and it protects the liver reduces the hepatotoxicity toxicity of various drugs or any other factor so it is also uh, mainly the basic thing is that all these herbs they are acting on uh, hepato protection and basically they have an antioxidant effect haridra which is nowadays it is being uh, promoted very much uh, by all the pathies and it is used nowadays curcuma longa it has curcumin which has a basic anti inflammatory property and hepato protective action of haridra is uh, now everybody is uh, uh, using this uh, herb and it is uh, quite uh, regularly used by the other doctors also musta or cypress rotundus vasa and kutki kutki is uh, one of the major herb which has been uh, used in since ages and vasa generally it is being given for the uh, cough Uh, preparation it is used but it is everybody is not aware that it is also used for the uh, uh, this uh, as an antioxidant for liver hepato protective properties are also present in vasa and it is uh, it should be given to the patient and particularly in cases of viral hepatitis so these are a uh, few herbs i have listed here but there are lot number of other herbs also which uh, are present in the ayurvedic treasure but they are they are not been properly uh, either they Uh, need research or they are not been properly uh, conveyed to the other uh, pathies or to the other persons so uh, these are other again few herbs like neem giloy giloy is now everybody is using giloy and kiratik they have been used for liver disorders since ages by our ancient uh, cs they have already advocated and these are effective also so these are other herbs which can be given in which can help in viral hepatitis cases ashwagandha pipli tulsi these are uh, very common also but uh, they are very effective if they are given in a particular uh, dose and with for particular duration another two herbs bhingraj we uh, commonly use these herbs bhingraj eclipta alba uh, kumari kumari grith kumari this has been widely used by and propagated also nowadays for hepato protection and their antioxidant effect these two herbs i have listed only few of them now uh, some words about the herbo mineral formulations herbo mineral formulation actually we use the uh, bhasmas also they are uh, basically they are prepared these are the metallic preparation but with proper preparation they can give they can be given to the uh, viral hepatitis cases and they have to be found to be effective but uh, we need a particular data bank for these uh, researches and data bank for this uh, these uh, uh, 
herbo mineral uh, formulation they have, they can always they can always be given for the cases where there is no cure like hepatocellular carcinoma we have i have listed few of them but there can be other also as i have told you that there are around 300 Uh, preparations which are described in the text, both herbs and herbal mineral, around 300 are there. But few of them I have listed. Like one of the commonest medicine used is Arogya Vardhani Vati. This is the this is the most commonly used uh, herbal mineral preparation by the Ayurvedic practitioner, and it is found to be very. very effective not only in liver disorders but uh, it has multiple effects but for liver disorders this is the uh, basic uh, drug which is very very much effective than other brahat loknath ras can given mahamrutunjal mahamrutunjal loho navjivan ras these or uh, all are herbo mineral preparations which are described in text and uh, used by the practitioner also and they can be given uh, in liver disorder and particularly the other complication of liver disorder like hepatocellular carcinoma and cirrhosis cases so these are again some compound ayurvedic formulation like asa vai narish we are using they are basically fermented preparation which are given after mil dhate arish bijika these are na few names which i have given uh, for the powerpoint pre presentation but we have lot number of other medicine and there are some decoction preparation also like faltrik adi kwat and uh, vishal adi fan these are two uh, commonly used preparation but we have some other compound ayurvedic formulation which which have been uh, given and we uh, our ancient uh, Uh, text they have also described and uh, physician they are using since thousand of years so this was in short now uh, we come to the future prospects in viral hepatitis the as uh, i have told you that science of ayurveda can contribute a lot in management of hepatitis b and c and help eradicate these two silent killers and thus we can achieve the who goal by 230 of eradicating these hepatitis b and c and uh, Uh, second uh, the future regarding some future prospect we can promote the evidence based practices in ayurveda encouragement of the interdisciplinary researches with present day investigation and follow ups can be uh, started so that we come out with the uh, proper research and uh, proper uh, researches can uh, we can uh, then help the patients also sometimes uh, there is a notion that uh, these drugs are hepatotoxic some of the doctors they believe this but we can come with the uh, researches and uh, present day investigation investigation and follow up can help us and proper documentation of ayurvedic studies in uh, viral uh, hepatitis can be done for the future prospect better future prospects in viral hepatitis so this was in short about the ayurvedic aspect thank you all thank you ma'am Uh, for such an uh, enlightening presentation, uh, now I would like to invite Dr. Rahul to officially IELTS for the I pledge. What do you, Dr. Rahul? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, now may I request all the panelists to kindly switch on your camera. Uh, raise your right hand like this. and repeat after me i pledge that i will try to keep my liver healthy i pledge that i will try to keep my liver healthy i pledge that i will get myself and my family tested and vaccinated i pledge that i will get myself and my family tested and vaccinated i pledge that i will generate dialogue with my colleagues on hepatitis i pledge that i will generate dialogue with my colleagues on hepatitis I pledge that I will teach ten people about hepatitis. I pledge that I will teach ten people about hepatitis. I pledge that I will not discriminate people having living with hepatitis. I pledge that I will not discriminate people living with hepatitis. I pledge that I will contribute in empowering people against hepatitis. I pledge that I will contribute in empowering people against hepatitis. Thank you so much. Over to Dr. Naman. Thank you, Dr. Rahul. and uh, i think uh, we are uh, going well on time now uh, i request uh, dr namrata if uh, we can open the house for discussion or we can take up uh, some questions that have been posted in the question and answer box or chat boxes uh, by the attendees and i request uh, our panelists uh, to please uh, address uh, if there are any issues or uh, any questions regarding uh, today's theme 
Thank you so much, Dr. Norman, and I especially thank all the speakers for very uh, immaculately taking us through the perspectives and uh, making us understand and elucidating how important it is to acknowledge the challenge that hepatitis B and hepatitis C poses to us. I especially thank the efforts of the Department of Ayush, especially the Director, Dr. Manchanda, sir, to, uh, to allow us an opportunity, and I do hope and believe that the participants today must have gotten deeper insights on the challenge of hepatitis. I request the audiences to please post your questions in the question and answer box that you may locate in your Zoom platform. Uh, for now, to begin with, the forum is now open to take all your queries, to your questions related to the sessions that we've just had by Dr. Sujata, Dr. Kanika, Dr. Tushar, who also happened to be the panelist for this panel discussion. Um, we do have certain general questions that came in. Uh, so I, I'd like to address the question to Dr. Kanika. The first question is, how long does HPV survive outside the body? Dr. Kanika, would you like to take this question? So hepatitis B averagely uh, lives for a week outside the body and hepatitis C virus, uh, uh, it survives for around four days. Outside the body. The next question that is uh, Can hepatitis B positive mother breastfeed? Can HBV and HCV positive mother breastfeed the child? Dr. Kanika. So, uh, breastfeeding has a critical uh, role uh, and the fact that about 5% of the mothers worldwide are chronic hepatitis B carriers. So, uh, the various studies, they indicate that there is no evidence that uh, breastfeeding poses any additional risk to the infants of HPV carrier mothers. Uh, and the use of hepatitis B vaccine in uh, infant immunization programs as recommended by WHO and now implemented in over uh, 80 countries, it is a further development that will eventually reduce, eliminate the risk for transmission. So the next question we have from Dr. Rahul Singh. Uh, Dr. Rahul is asking, what is the schedule of vaccination for adults? Dr. Tushar, would you like to answer this question? The question is uh, by Dr. Rahul Singh, what is the schedule of vaccination for adults? Uh, we have already spoken about it in the uh, presentation. Uh, it's a monovalent vaccine at the dose of 1 ml intramuscularly, which should be given at 0 months, and then after 1 month, and then 6 months after the first dose. Thank you. Uh, then we have an, another attendee asking, what is the risk of transmission of hepatitis B percutaneously? The question is, what is the risk of transmission of hepatitis B percutaneously, Dr. Kani? So in continuation, uh, Dr. Tushar just addressed a query regarding the schedule of vaccination for adults. Related to the same query, we have what to do if I have missed the second dose of HBV vaccination? Should I go for third dose and when or should I start the cycle from dose one? So to answer this question, uh, in case if you've missed the dose of HBV or you are not sure when was your last dose that you took, you, there is no need to go uh, to repeat the entire cycle. What we suggest is whenever you recall that you've missed a dose, you might as well just go ahead and take your second shot. So there is no need to begin the cycle all over again. Although for those who would like to get the vaccination, the dose for adults is 0, 1 and 6. So we have uh, Neelam Jakar asking the question, till what age people can take vaccination? Is it safe for senior citizens? Uh, as such, uh, the, since you must have already been apprised of, there is a birth dose that starts for the child, for an infant right at the time of birth. 
or it is even safe to uh, vaccinate them within 24 hours of their birth especially if the child is born of hepatitis b positive mother so there is no certain age cut off and it is uh, there has been no uh, serious contraindication found for vaccinations among senior citizens in fact we do emphasize that everyone who have not been uh, vaccinated for hepatitis b vaccine or who are not sure of their status of vaccination can go ahead and get themselves vaccinated uh, we also had dr tushar touching upon the uh, point of the hepatitis b vaccination titers if you have your antibody titers above 10 uh, micrograms then that is absolutely protective you do not need to have any booster dose at any point of life uh, any point of time and uh, any uh, titers below that level that is the cut off that we follow titers below that level you might want to go for a booster dose committee bula raha bol to bula liye ha committee mein hai bahar hai computer mein uh the next question is if a person is infected with hpv can the person still be vulnerable to contracting hcv and vice versa so the studies have not ruled out the possibility uh, if there if a patient is already infected with hepatitis b virus they can contract hepatitis c virus as well uh, so and same goes for vice versa uh the question regarding the percutaneous transmission of hepatitis b viral infection uh please allow us to get back to you on that query with certain data because the clinic the research data for this question is not very adequate at this point of time and we do believe that we'll be able to address your query shortly the next question dr sujatha would you like to take this question i am a hepatitis b positive male can i plan my family and have a healthy child protect, protected from hpv do i have to answer this question uh, we can have dr kanika answer this query Yeah, so <clears throat> the transmission of hepatitis B uh, can be prevented in uh, your partner if you are hepatitis B positive, as it is a vaccine preventable disease. So it's uh, since we all saw that it's quite common in many parts of the world. So when properly tested, people often learn that they too are living with hep chronic Hep B and uh, or that they have recovered from a past infection. So uh, the uh, the genetic counseling they recommend the hepatitis triple panel blood test with hbsag or hb uh, hbc antibody total and hbs antibody and antigen as i told you so they will let your partner know if they have a current infection or they have recovered from a past infection or whether or not they need to be vaccinated and then future children should also be vaccinated starting as a newborn to help prevent transmission <clears throat> especially if the mother is found to be hb hbs ag positive all right the uh, i believe the queries have most of the queries have been answered if you do have your questions please post them in the q and a box uh, regarding the data related to percutaneous infection of hbv uh, the data is inadequate and we will definitely get back to you on this query what we do uh, what we can tell you at this point of time is that the percutaneous transmission of hcv since hbv is a blood borne infection it spreads through uh, blood so any surface that is contaminated by blood the virus stays alive on that surface for about 7 days that is for the hb uh, hepatitis b virus and 4 days is the time for virus to stay outside the body on any surfaces contaminated by blood infected blood for hepatitis c virus so any contact with uh, infected surfaces uh 
it may be in case if you have some cuts or open wounds or bleeding ulcers can make the uh, can make the people in the same household prone to contracting infections otherwise uh, living a healthy normal family life uh, it's is strongly encouraged since the hepatitis b infection does not spread through normal kissing or touch or hugs or even saliva unless there is an open bleeding ulcer inside the mouth although the uh, research paper suggests that the risk of hbv or hepatitis c infecting a healthcare worker is higher in percutaneous than in mucosal cutaneous exposure the rate of transmission of hcv infection can be five times higher in percutaneous than in mucosal cutaneous exposure but the risk of acquiring these infections through conjunctival exposure is also high so in such cases uh, in such cases we do uh, under the nvhcp that is the national viral control uh, health program uh, viral hepatitis control program we do uh, give the post exposure profile axis in which um, there are certain steps and guides that you have to follow for example if there is a needle stick injury to a healthcare worker which are, which they are most prone to we advise them to run the uh, the part the part that has been injured under uh, running tap water we strongly contribute uh, we uh, you don't have to squeeze that part since that damages the capillaries in that area making the virus uh, will making that area more vulnerable for the entry of the virus uh, so i hope that answers the query the next question is by dr rahul singh Uh, do body fluids from a hepatitis surface antigen plus uh, 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 positive like saliva urine etc serve as a means of transmission dr kanika uh, hepatitis <coughs> b virus can be transmitted both by <coughs> sorry parenteral and uh, sexual route <coughs> so most often by mucous membrane or percutaneous exposure but uh, as far as the uh, Uh, if you want the how likely is it the numbers we will get back for hepatitis we will have to get back for hepatitis b but uh, yes the uh, saliva serum and even the semen have also been found to be uh, infectious so any percutaneous exposure to uh, infected serum or visceral fluids so that has been uh, found to be infectious for hepatitis b i hope that answers your query dr singh Doctor uh, Nena Joshi has asked a question. What special measures should be taken in hepatitis infection in patients with comorbidities? Uh, the known case of hepatitis are generally under the care of a hepatologist. So um, the 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 regimen of the drug, the dosage is uh, very uh, calculatively administered to such patients. We do. Uh, for the for the patients who are already on uh, for example hypertension or diabetes uh, there are some strict dietary controls that are suggested to the patients living with hepatitis and it is not necessary that all the patients require treatment it all depends on the uh, viral load uh, and also the level of infection so the care must be provided under uh, under a hepatologist and uh, i'd also like dr sujata to address this question in what is the uh, holistic view of ayurveda for such patients actually in ayurveda we are giving uh, immunomodulatory medicines and ba basically ayurveda aims at prevention of the disease so uh, when we are uh, talking of covid uh, 19 patients and hbv vaccine for them then they can be uh, definitely they can be given ayurveda for their immunity boosting thing we can all give ayurvedic medicines and we are also we have given also uh, along with vaccine we have added uh, two medicines of ayurveda which are basically immunomodulators and we have given uh, them along with the vaccine because uh, there was a vaccine camp in our college and we have given basically one was uh, giloy or guduchi and one was the uh, immunomodulatory chavan prash which was given to the vaccinated cases also so uh, natural uh, there is a role of ayurveda in uh, these two 
covid 19 and uh, hbv we can uh, give on a preventive basis we can add ayurvedic medicines along with the vaccination vaccine they are required ayurveda also uh, says that we should always uh, prevent the thing prevent the disease but we can give ayurvedic medicines which which can act as rasayan or immunomodulators and they can help their uh, resistance to the disease they can ayurvedic medicines can help definitely they can be used as an adjuvant along with vaccination thank you so much dr sujata uh, we do not see any new questions coming in so um, all right so i guess that's it um, in case if you do have some further queries we would appreciate if you could email those queries to us you can get connected to us at webinar ilbs Uh, at gmail dot com, we will display that uh, email ID once again during the end of the session also. Uh, so we'd love to hear from you, and we'd also like to get back to you regarding any specific queries that you might have regarding your patients or the treatments and how to uh, administer the dosage and all. So uh, with that, I believe we can, with your permission, we can close the panel discussion. Uh, so over to you, Dr. Norman, for closing comments. Thank you, Dr. Nagata. It was a wonderful session uh, and a wonderful experience, uh, rather, being associated with ILBS and Empathy. And it is a nice initiative towards uh, empowerment of healthcare professionals regarding hepatitis. And I thank all speakers for sharing such valuable information. I'm sure uh, all the attendees must have been uh, benefited with the proceedings of the webinar. Various aspects of uh, hepatitis B and C were highlighted uh, during the sessions. Dr. Kanika very precisely made us aware about the prevalence of different types of uh, hepatitis, and particularly about hepatitis B virus and HCV, and the strategies about HBV and HCV. Not only the available numbers, but also the limitations of current literature, challenges, and the areas to work upon, especially uh, in policy making. then dr tushar also very wonderfully explain about uh, the need of screening the key interventions for eliminating hpv and hcv and uh, about various rapid diagnostic tests available the vaccination strategy and schedule and uh, detail of common vaccines available uh, be it both the, the monovalent and combination vaccines the recent advances also he highlighted and about the multiple strategies which uh, may be adopted for health education about this hepatitis b and hepatitis c at community level and lastly dr sujata yadav also enlightened us all about the perspective of viral hepatitis in ayurveda and the concept uh, and description of various herbal medicines being used for hepatitis and other hepatic illness in centuries and yes uh, very rightly said by ma'am there is a need to conduct more and more researches on these medicines and proper documentation focusing on safety and efficacy of these medicines in the light of recent uh, scientific parameters i think uh, all our attendees must have been benefited uh, with the proceedings uh, now uh, i would like to invite uh, dr sujata rajan uh, vice principal in utbia college uh, to formally propose the vote of thanks over to you ma'am thank you so much dr norman uh, on behalf of the organizing team Uh, it is my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this uh, webinar uh, recent advances in preventive and control of hepatitis firstly i would like to thank you torch bearer of this webinar our respected director sir dr rk manchanda for leading and inspiring us to create awareness on the hbv hcv in the medical college an sibia college i am also grateful to our principal dr mohammad zubair for representing our institute for this noble cause for preventing control of hepatitis i thanks to dr manoj sham kumar medical superintendent uh tibya college and dr aisha raja deputy medical superintendent of uh, tibya college for their great support i sincerely thank the institute of liver and biliary sciences and we are sure homeopathy medical college for taking this initiative and their collaboration made this webinar successful today my heartfelt feels with the lots of gratitude and respect to our distinguished guests speakers dr shiv kumar sarin vc ilbs Dr. Umesh Kapil, Professor ILBS; Dr. Kanika Kaushal, Assistant Professor ILBS; Dr. Tushar Prabhakar, Senior Resident ILBS; 
डॉक्टर राहुल गहलोत प्रोजेक्ट ऑफिसर एम्पैथी आई एल बी एस फॉर नॉट ओनली स्पेरिंग देयर वेल्यूबल टाइम फॉर अस टू ग्रेस दिस वेबिनार बट ऑल्सो फॉर इनलाइटिंग अस विद देयर कमेंडेबल टॉक ऑन द सब्जेक्ट थैंक्स टू ऑल uh for your clearing our concept and enhancing our understanding of hbv and cp we really owe the thanks a lot my great uh, heartfelt thanks to dr namrata mohan and dr archana narayan without their cooperation this webinar would not have been possible thank you so much madam i am running short words to express my humble thanks to dr sujata yadav hud department of pg of tai chi kisa general medicine for throwing light on the ayurvedic perspective of viral hepatitis indeed you have put your best effort into creating a positive attitude towards patients suffering from hbv scv through ayurvedic intervention thank you so much ma'am i would like to thank dr noman sali for their uh, the concluding remarks and uh, as a uh, comparer of this uh, webinar the delegates who have joined us from the corners of the country senior faculty members my uh, loving colleagues the researchers and my dear students and friends thank you all very much for joining us i sincerely apologize if i have missed out of somebody thank you again thanks a lot of you thanks thank you ma'am and i think it's time uh, uh, has been displayed by dr nabrat also for the post uh, webinar link has been uh, shared and i request all the attendees to please uh, Uh, log in to that uh, link and you can submit your responses uh, after which the e certificates uh, will be distributed and i think uh, uh, if dr namrata would like to add something uh, i request her if she can uh, clarify about this uh, post webinar link also thank you so much dr norman thank you so much uh, dr sujata the speakers uh for your time and patience to the audience who have been very patiently uh, attending the webinar and also very actively posting the queries uh the email that has been displayed on your screen right now uh, we would love to have you get connected with us please drop in your queries we do have some additional queries that are coming in uh we try to best uh, get back to you with our answers the email to get connected with us is webinar ilbs@gmail.com Uh, also to know more about the empathy campaign please log on to the www. the empathy campaign. com that is our website and also make sure that you go through the exhaustive knowledge repository that we have over uh, viral hepatitis on our website the initiatives get connected with us we would love to hear from you any suggestions that you might to have for us any constructive criticisms that might allow us to have insights from the audience perspective and how best we can improve uh, improve our webinars and generate awareness disseminate the knowledge regarding viral hepatitis especially for the ayush cadre to come together and show solidarity and support in tackling the challenge of viral hepatitis the post webinar link that has been shared in the chat box i request you all to please click on that link it will lead you once again to some brief questionnaires um that helps us know how successful we have been in our endeavors so please do ensure that you submit the post webinar uh, survey in order to enable and generate the link for your e certificates be patient with us kindly bear with us for about 3 days as the certificates would re, uh, take about 3 days time to be generated and dropped in your emails so uh, with that I think with your permission we can close this session for today. I thank all the participants once again, the speakers, uh, especially the director sir Dr. Manchanda whom I have been a proud student of and it is his uh, teaching and the learning that I am where I am today. Thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity sir. Thank you so much. So we are now signing off and the post webinar link would be open for certain few more minutes. So make sure that you submit the survey.